all together into one overall repository so that everyone and every data type and every data set within your business that is preservation data uh, can benefit from the platform. Hello everybody, um, welcome back. Um, this is our, our final conversation, Mark, discussing digital preservation. And I guess in some ways it's a bit of a summary. Um, we've talked about efficiencies, um, platform choice. Uh, we've certainly talked about the importance with digital preservation about looking at the longevity. It's almost looking at the, you know, the end result at the start. Um, what are the key takeaways, I guess, for our customers now watching this video? What, what are the, the messages we should give them? So when, when they started digital preservation, what are the key considerations now and as they start maybe planning their own journey? The preservation platform, it's a big commitment. It's a, it's a platform for all of your data that is really important to your customer or really important to your organisation, sorry, uh, and, and that you want to preserve and you want to make accessible. So bringing it all together into one um, overall repository uh, so that everyone and every data type and every data set within your business that um, is preservation data uh, can benefit from the platform uh, and try and get everyone in. Uh, and that, that will result in efficiencies for access because um, all the data is in one place. So all of the tools that are used to manage that platform manage all of the data, the preservation style data in your organisation rather than just a subset. So you don't have islands of data. And of course, when you have islands of data in your organisation, they're harder to search, they're harder to access, and they're almost harder to, uh, to well, monetize isn't the right word, but, but I guess to gain intelligence from if, if that's what you're storing the data for. So you know, if you're a scientific organisation, you've got multiple repositories of data, you have to search across different repositories to find the answers you're looking for, then that's ultimately inefficient. So bringing them all together into one repository. Um, we know that you know, protecting data inside a storage system might use RAID or erasure encoding, and that will take a part of the capacity away from the usable space. So looking for a system that takes the minimum amount of space away from the usable capacity um, didn't make that much difference when you're storing a few gigabytes or a couple of terabytes, but when you're storing a petabyte and you might lose a third of it or a quarter of it due to protection methods, then that's quite a big, you know, that's a big chunk of your data and you want to try and avoid that. So you want a really efficient platform and you want a, a platform that scales really easily. So plug and play scalability is what we want. We don't need fault lift changes. We want to be able to plug in new storage, it be recognized and seen and be, and be managed just the same way that the rest of the system is. And then think about the metadata and the applications that you're using. So one data store, one digital um, preservation repository can be used for multiple applications and multiple workloads. So it's not one repository for one application, it's about bringing it all together in one cohesive view. Uh, and I guess uh, as well I would say enterprise all the way. This data is really important, so put it on a platform it deserves. So an enterprise class platform with proper protection, with good support, where a manufacturer with a lot more money than um, the customer or indeed CAE have got um, to look at how all the different components interact to make sure that there's nothing in that stack that is going to introduce a data vulnerability that might affect your data. I guess these are complex solutions, there's lots of elements yeah. involved, um, but I think to the benefit of the customer uh, or people looking at starting a digital preservation journey, there's good information available, so the Digital Preservation Coalition, yeah, sure. a fantastic source of content um, and an organisation to engage with. CAE itself has digital preservation guides and information available and obviously as a team we're very much here to talk to our customers. Um, is there any sort of key message, final message you'd like to give to those people who've been watching us for the last few weeks? I, I would say get in conversation and start um, talking to organisations like CAE. I think DPC, the Digital Preservation Coalition, is a really important resource uh, and they actively help their members and their associated uh, organisations um, go through the journey that is um, building a digital preservation solution. Thank you, Mark. Um, on behalf of myself, Mark, um, and all my colleagues at CAE, I want to thank everybody who's been watching these videos for the last few weeks. Um, we've enjoyed having this conversation. Um, there's plenty more to talk about, so I hope we come back for another series in the future. But for now, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.